Mr. Prithi. Fine, sir. You are the final year. Yes, yes sir. already finished theory, sir. Waiting for three minutes. Oh, theory over, ma. Very good. Good luck. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Where is your center? No, no. Not yet announced, sir. She will walk through, sir. Cake walk. God bless you. Your blessing, sir. God bless you, ma. No, thank you. Thank you, sir. Mm. Rajiv sir, good evening, sir. Sir, good evening, sir. Rajiv sir, good evening. Sir, namaskar, namaskar, sir. Namaskar. Na sir and Shanoi sir has said uh, no. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They are yes. committed to someone. We, I think Modi sir is in Kavarna. Say, I think. Yes, some great projects are being launched today. National morning tomorrow. National morning and uh, today they have that uh, Akshay Patra project like how we have a noon meal scheme for the school children. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Dipendra Sarkar will be joining a little late. I said, I'm waiting for Pritham. Pritham, sir, are you with us? Next one, Tanjavur, sir. Sorry, sir. Next month, Tanjavur. Ah, yes, sir. December, Mumbai. Have you registered, sir? Yes, sir. We can see you. Raju, sir, will be coming. Sir, good evening, sir. Good evening. Sir, good evening, sir. Yes, sir. We'll be coming to Bombay. Yes, sir. We will have a special dinner for all the EPG clinics faculty, sir. During yes, Mumbai. yes. That would be nice. It is, uh, I think I was waiting for an opportunity. I think right. we will have it, sir. We will have a separate, uh, maybe on the workshop day, uh, we right. will all meet up, sir. Karna, sir, Namaskar. Namaskaram, sir. Tanjavur, sir. Tanjavur, sir. Tanjavur, sir. Somebody by name speaking Scalpel and all have joined, sir. Very scary. <laughs> Scalpel speaks, then it's big trouble only. <laughs> all youngsters are named. Nice, nice to keep those names. But if Scalpel Not... starts speaking, all our secrets will come out, sir. <laughs> we have to change it, sir. <laughs> I think Deepender Sarkar also has come in. Nice. Sir, it is 8 o'clock, sir. We will start, I think. Yes. Um, Pritham, sir, I don't know whether he has some challenges. I think others have come. Um, uh, good evening, friends. Uh, it's been a pleasure to invite you for all this, uh, all of you for this PG Clinics edition. We have two interesting uh, exam cases. One is from our centers in Disabilities. Uh, Dr. Preeti will be sharing a case on retroperitoneal tumor. And uh, Dr. Shri Vidya from uh, Coimbatore Medical College will be sharing on uh, CA Breast. We have our uh, senior invited faculty, Professor B.S. Papad. He has uh, been uh, teaching in the LTM Medical College for more than 23 years. And he has written, authored many books and he continues to teach uh, and inspire students. Welcome, sir. Good evening, sir. Professor Dittendra Sarkar, sir, is a most eminent uh, breast surgeon. And uh, recently he has traveled almost to all named breast clinics, starting from Manchester to the global uh, Centers for Excellence in Breast Cancer. So we can hear from him what is the latest. And uh, he has been um, quite busy and in spite of that, he kindly agreed to be part of the faculty. Thank you, Deependra Sarkar, sir. And uh, I'm sure Preetam Rai, sir, from Srinivas Institute of Medical Sciences should be joining soon. And uh, I think uh, Malikarjun sir has been earlier with us and uh, he has been kind enough to join us for this evening. So uh, we have uh, our uh, senior faculty, uh, Professor Jailal sir, Srinivasan sir, Karnakaran sir, Rajiv Sakai sir, and uh, we have others joining in and few of them have expressed their inability to join. So, but anyway, uh, this is going to be a teaching session. So I request the faculty to guide them, the PGs, if they are not able to answer, because uh, the initial first half will be on the presentation. 
and the second half will be on the management and recent advances also so this is a plan um, definitely the invited faculty take the priority to ask questions so first we will have the uh, soft tissue tumor patient can i request uh, preeti to share her powerpoint and start her presentation good luck to you thank you sir My, are my slides visible, sir? Yeah, you are good to go, ma. Good luck. Uh, uh, good evening. Anna, sir. Good evening, sir. Go ahead, ma. Uh, good evening, all respected professors. I am Dr. Preeti Subalakshmi from Isabel Hospital here to present a case on abdominal uh, swelling. Uh, my guide is uh, Dr. M. Kanagavel, sir. I would like to thank sir for giving me this opportunity. Shall I start, sir? Yeah, please go ahead. I am um, presenting a case of Mr. X, who is a 33-year-old male residing in Kadalur, Tamil Nadu, businessman by occupation, came with the chief complaint of fullness of the abdomen for the past two months. Uh, patient was apparently asymptomatic two months ago, following which he felt a fullness in his left side of the abdomen, gradually increasing over the time. It is associated with vague abdominal discomfort on and off over the same side of his abdomen for the last one month, which is non-radiating, neither increasing nor decreasing, no aggravating factors, relieves on taking analgesics, sleep undisturbed because of the pain. No history of alteration in bowel habits, no history of loss of weight or appetite, no history of no previous history of abdominal pain or recollectable trauma to the abdomen, no history of fever or night sweats, no history of dysuria or hematuria or any urinary disturbances, no history of back pain, no history of cough, hemoptysis or breathlessness, no history of jaundice. Uh, treatment and medical history. Uh, he has uh, no medical illness. He has not taken any treatment or admissions for the current ailment. No history of radiation therapy received in the past. Surgical history. History of uh, he had undergone a surgery for both eyes at the age of three. Details of which are not known. Uh, he had undergone a surgery for his left eye for retinal detachment three years back. Family history, he has two siblings, one elder brother and one younger brother. Both of them are healthy. No history of cancer or cancer-related deaths in the family. Personal history, he is married with two children. No occupational exposure, no habituations. Sleep pattern seems to be normal. Bowel and bladder habits are apparently normal. Summarizing my history, 33-year-old male with no medical history, no habituations, complaints of fullness of the abdomen, which is increasing over two months, and vague abdominal discomfort over, the, over his left side of the abdomen for one month, with no history suggestive of gastrointestinal or renal system involvement, no constitutional symptoms. I think you can go ahead. Uh, it's fine, we will... Right. You can continue with the examination part. We will ask because we need to understand the whole scenario before we actually ask you a question. Okay? Okay, sir. Okay, please. Um, going on with general examination, patient was examined in a well-lit room after obtaining a verbal consent in presence of a male attender. He was cooperative, conscious, oriented to time, place, person at the time of examination. Uh, he exhibited a morphinoid habitus with long limbs, arm span more than height, arachnodactyly, with positive thumb sign. His BMI uh, was 21.6, ECOG score 0, no pallor, ictris, cyanosis, clubbing, generalized lymphadenopathy, or pedal edema. Uh, examination of vitals. Uh, he was afebrile at the time of examination. Pulse 88 beats per minute. Blood pressure 120-80 millimeters of mercury. Respiratory rate 16 uh, breaths per minute. Saturation 100% in room air. Uh, examination of abdomen. On inspection, patient, in, patient was put in supine position with adequate exposure from nipple to mid thigh. Abdomen looked protuberant with fullness noted over entire left side of the abdomen, suprapubic and right iliac fossa. No scars or distended veins noted over the abdominal wall. No skin changes. Uh, umbilicus midline and inverted. All the quadrants were moving proportionately with the respiration. Cough impulse noted in the left inguinal region. Right inguinal orifice intact. External genitalia appeared normal. No varicocele noted. Inspection of the back showed fullness of renal angle over both the sides. 
this is schematic representation of the mass okay uh, on palpation no rise of temperature noted in any of the quadrants a palpable mass was noted in the abdomen approximately 31 cross uh, 23 centimeter <laughs> non tender occupying the left hypochondrium left lumbar region left iliac fossa crossing the midline at the level of um, umbilicus occupying the hypogastrium right iliac fossa and extending into the lum right lumbar region the mass had discrete but irregular borders superior border two centimeter below the left costal margin i was able to insinuate my fingers below the left costal margin inferior border could not be made out medial border 9 cm to the right of the midline, lateral border about 3 cm beyond the left midaxillary line. Surface of the mass was nodular, consistency was variable. It did not move with respiration, it became less prominent on leg rising test. It was bimanually palpable but not palatable. Um, no hepatomegaly, uh, spleen not palpable, expansile cough impulse noted over the left hernial orifice, non tender and reducible. Right inguinal orifice intact, no palpable varicocele, bilateral testis normally palpable. On percussion, liver span 9 cm at midclavicular line, no signs of free fluid, dull note on percussion over the mass, rest of the abdomen resonant. On auscultation, no bruit, normal bowel sounds heard. Rectal examination, rectum uh, empty, stool staining, yellow stool staining present, no deposits. Vascular system examination of bilateral lower limbs, no bilateral pedal edema, all peripheral pulses felt normally in both the limbs, no varicosities in bilateral lower limbs. Cardiovascular system, S1, S2 hurt, no murmurs. Respiratory system, bilateral air entry equal, normal vesicular breath sounds. Examination of central nervous system, no focal neurological deficit. Summarizing my history, 33-year-old male with no medical history, no habituations, complaints of fullness of the abdomen, which is increasing over past two months, and vague abdominal discomfort over his left side with no history suggestive of gastrointestinal or renal system involvement, no constitutional symptoms. Examination revealed a nodular palpable mass of 31 cross 23 centimeter occupying entire left side of the abdomen, crossing the midline, occupying right iliac fossa and right lumbar region, which is non-tender, not moving with respiration, non palatable no lymphadenopathy, no palpable varicocele. Yeah, very well presented, no, very good, very well presented. Great, keep it up. Thank you, sir. From all this, in a nutshell, you have put it a 33-year-old male. Yes, sir. With no medical history, with right iliac What is the first thing which strikes you? Before we start from the history. What would be your clinical diagnosis? What is the first clinical diagnosis? Um, uh, sir, uh, he has... Uh, you want to give a, a good differential diagnosis? Ah, uh, Yes, sir. My uh, differential diagnosis would be... Uh, first would be a, a retroperitoneal tumor, sir. Second would be a non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, sir. Uh, well, uh, can you tell us what do you mean by retroperitoneal tumor? What is the what are the criteria of retroperitoneal tumor? Um, sir, uh, it uh, the patient uh, does not exhibit any gastrointestinal uh, symptoms, sir. And urinary symptoms. Ur and urinary symptoms as well, sir. So that is why I'm. Uh... And a retroperitoneal lump. It's said to be a lump which is confined to connective tissue, vascular tissue, nervous tissue, lymph nodes, lymph nodes. but other than organs. Yes, sir. This is by convention. Yes, sir. Organ means which organs? Pancreas, kidney, ureter, and adrenal. Adrenals. Yes, sir. Right? So these organs means a kidney is also in a way actually a retroperitoneal organ. But still, by convention, it is not considered as a retroperitoneal. Uh, it is not called a retroperitoneal tumor, whereas a renal lump is uh, discussed as such. Means it's a renal lump, and if you could come to a diagnosis of renal lump, say you can say it is hydronephrosis, or you can say it is a renal mass specifically. And the rest of all are under the heading of retroperitoneal lumps. All right. So that is one thing. Second thing is you said it is a retroperitoneal lump. What makes you say that it is a retroperitoneal lump from your clinical examination? Yes, sir. Uh, first, uh, because the huge size, sir, 
and uh, it is uh, crossing the midline not moving with respiration and it becomes less prominent on carnot's test uh, but for that matter any intra abdominal lump would become uh, uh, less prominent on straight leg raising test isn't yes, it yes sir yes sir so it may be intraperitoneal or it may be retroperitoneal yes sir why specifically retroperitoneal yes sir that is my question why specifically retroperitoneal why not intraperitoneal uh sir with one criterion uh, you said and it is agree i, I we agree one criteria that there are no gi symptoms and no urinary symptoms yes sir and on examination just give one or two points which will give, be in favor of retroperitoneal now sir it is uh, by manually palpable but not palpable sir no so we can differentiate uh, a peritoneal uh, intraperitoneal or retroperitoneal with uh, a knee elbow test but uh, currently we are not uh, doing it so yeah, i so couldn't differentiate sir. no problem forget it fixed it is fixed it was immobile you said it is immobile no yes sir it is immobile that is the most important clinical criterion which suggests that it is retroperitoneal now. okay sir all right so should we go back any... to this patient was operated at the age of 3 years yes sir and now he is presenting at the age of 35 years is it yes sir do you think there is any correlation between that operation and this which the patient is presenting um sir uh, he is having uh, a group of symptoms suggestive of morphonoid habitus sir so it could be a ectopia lentis or for myopia he could have got operated sir or uh, but did you try to find out what was the operation done uh, no sir uh, I, he, he, the patient uh, have no details about it sir and he could not recollect what has happened sir and where was the scar of the operation sir in the eye sir he had a eye surgery okay, done in the eyes it was there okay, yes sir okay. right not in the abdomen no sir no sir it was in the uh, his eyes sir okay right both now eyes. why did you carry out the dre for this patient uh, sir as a completion sir carrying out the dre in this patient sir uh, as a part of my abdomen examination uh, okay. that's okay why specifically in this patient what you wanted to see uh, sir any deposits sir right to but that you have not and uh, i have mentioned sir can you just go back to your diary examination Parietal examination, rectum empty, stool standing present, no blood, growth polyploated. But here we are not interested that there is some intraluminal pathology here. We are thinking, or oh, there may be some extraluminal pathology. Okay, sir. Right. So that is the rectal shelf or the bloomer shelf, which is. Yes, sir. Right. Okay. Diti, I think that you are already fixed your mind on a retroperitoneal. and you are insistently saying that no gastrointestinal symptoms do you expect a large such a big 30 cm mass in the epigastrium hypogastrium is not producing any symptoms on the gastrointestinal tract you are you are saying the lower abdomen also it is mixed yes, such sir. a symptom not producing not even a early satiety you are expecting that no symptoms particular to the gastrointestinal tract yes. to be there मैन्यूवर सर so you is it a feel or a palpatory finding or inspectory finding uh, sir grade 4 we can see in in inspection sir grade 2 3 it is a palpatory finding sir so you are not having any uh, what are the other signs you will be seeing suppose it's a large retroperitoneal tumor 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is crossing the midline. So either yes, it is compressing the inferior vena cava. Yes, sir. No, no evidence of any other. Why do you think particular report very closely you are repeatedly looking for? Sir, by... Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I have mentioned, sir, in the inspection, I have mentioned, sir, sec. No scars or distended veins noted over the abdominal wall, I have mentioned, sir, in the inspection. And the examination of vascular system, I have separately put, sir. No pedal edema. Something, yes, sir, such a large tumor crossing the midline, definitely yes, it would have been pushing up or compressing on the veins and artery. But no symptoms related to that is present. Yes, sir. You are able to make out a hernia, but lower border of the swelling also, you are not able to see the lower border of the swelling. Yes, sir. But you already defined the size of the swelling. You have said it is 8, 35 to 25. Yes, That's why I have put approximately, sir, because I have not, I was not able to insinuate my thing. But my, my, I was wondering that why you have not gone to the, not even mentioning anything about testes here. Yes, sir. I mentioned in the palpation, sir. Bilateral test is normally palpable. That's fine. Can you give me an example of a swelling? Yes, sir. Which is intra-abdominal swelling, which is uh, very huge. I mean, it can attain a very, very large size. Okay, sir. And yet, it may remain asymptomatic for years. Uh, mesenteric cyst, sir. Mm, anything else? That is also a cyst. I will give you a clue. Because this uh, discussion came up, uh, I thought I would ask you that question. It is also a cyst. Now I have given you a clue. Pseudocyst of pancreas. Sorry? Pseudocyst of pancreas. Oh, no, no, no. Not at all. It, it, it is huge and it is associated with symptoms. Okay. With, yes, sir. I am asking about it can attain a very huge size. It can be present for many years. Many years means in decades occasionally. And yet... Hardly any symptom, except for maybe a little bit fullness and to which patient is used to because it slowly grows over a period of years. Some <laughs> now, well, now, if I give a clue, you will give me the answer straight away. Some parasite responsible for that cyst. Sir. Um... Parasite, ma. Yes, sir. I'm... No? Um, hydrated cyst. Hydrated cyst. Hmm. Hydrated, hydrated cyst sometimes can grow to a huge, immense size and yet remain uh, asymptomatic, except for fullness on, in the abdomen. That's that's all. All right. Now, uh, uh, nine centimeter, no? That means yes, sir. Any correlation with that? Sir. You think it is normal? Yes, sir. No, the. Liver span is only 9 cm. Yes, sir. You are expecting this to be normal only. Yes, sir. So, at the end of history, uh, uh, does anyone does anyone have to ask anything in the, in the history? Yes, sir. Please, Dr. Sarkar, sir. Yeah, I, I have a few questions for Preeti. Now, Preeti, uh, just to revise our clinical knowledge. Now, if I think, I if I tell you it's a splenic swelling, how do you differentiate between a splenic swelling and a retroperitoneal swelling? Just uh, some months. Yeah. Yes, sir. In this case, I was able to insinuate my finger below the left costal margin, sir. So, uh, it, that way I'm differentiating uh, this mass from a spleen, sir. Very good. What are the other features of splenic swelling, uh, which are characteristic of spleen you will get apart from insinuating? Uh, so the bar the borders will be uh, um, edge will be rounded, sir. Non splenic notch. Splenic notch, and it is going to be mobile with respiration. Yes, sir, it? It, yes, sir. It is going to be mobile with respiration, sir. How do you differentiate this swelling? You told it's a bimanually palpable swelling. Yes, How sir. do you differentiate it with a renal swelling? It's a balotability, sir. Okay. So apart from balotability, uh, you, uh, how, how do you differentiate between a balotability and bimanual palpation in while you are doing a clinical examination? Uh, sir, um, the, um, when it is, uh, when the swelling is uh, 
pushed from behind it will come and uh, touch the other hand sir in case of balotability sir okay and in my manual palpation you put put two fingers on i mean two palms on both sides yes. you ask the patient to take a deep breath and with each breath you approximate the your fingers and gradually you will feel that in between the two the, the swelling become by manually palpable yes, but don't you think if a swelling is very big it may become by manually by manually palpable yet the palpability is lost it's encompassing the whole of the flanks is it yes, yes sir so uh, so if we leave that what other features will tell you that this could be a renal swelling uh, so history sir from history so uh, history you told there is no features the yes, i sir. accept but on clinical examination what features would tell you that this is a renal swelling and this is a pure retroperitoneal swelling and examine you have mentioned everything you have mentioned everything you just go back and recollect what you have told you just state them in in a sequential way that's it sir it is it will not cross the midline Uh, well that's not a very important feature of course looking at this swelling it doesn't really look like a renal swelling but suppose theoretically i ask you what will a renal swelling uh, uh, what is the relationship of the renal swelling in terms of resonance if you percuss the swelling what will you find if it's a renal swelling sir uh, a band of resonance sir Do you know what is paravertebral uh, paravertebral dullness? Yes, sir. Okay. What will be the note on uh, renal swelling? Resonant. Are you sure? resonant or dull? It's a dull note, sir. Are you sure? It's a dull note with a band of resonance. Uh... Really? see the dullness over kidney will be in continuity with in continuity with dullness or paravertebral area whereas in case of liver and spleen you will have a band of resonance in between okay. am i right sir do you want to, do, do you mean to say the same do you want mean to indicate the same to her uh as as sir you, you, what you are stating is perfectly right but uh, classically if she tells me that there is a colonic band of resonance in front of the kidney as an examiner i will be quite happy oh, i mean no, what you told is absolutely fine sir but i am happy if she states that yes i would be able to uh, ascertain a uh, pre renal uh, colonic band of resonance yes, but yes. if pretty i ask you to park us on the renal angle what will you find in case of a renal swelling Priti. Yes, sir. So, if I ask you to park us in the renal angle, what will you get while you are parking the renal angle if it's a renal swelling? Will it be resonant or it will be dull? Uh, in the normal note in the renal angle. Dull note, sir. Normal. Normal. Normally resonant, sir. Okay, that's mass, good. In case of mass, it will be dull, sir. if it is a renal swelling you will find that area becoming dull yes sir okay now what happen what would be the uh, movement of a renal swelling classically if it's such a big swelling sir it moves with the respirations but what will be the axis of movement of a splenic swelling and the axis of movement of a renal swelling just apply your common sense the upper pole of the kidneys are quite close while the lower pole is wide apart so it's downwards and outwards movement whereas the splenic swelling tend to move along the axis of the spleen that is the 10th rib towards the umbilicus isn't it yes sir yeah and would you be able to insinuate your finger in case of renal swelling uh yes sir 
normally you won't be able to do that my dear okay, but so. yeah if i am i were in your position i would have told you that maybe sir once in a while when we have an unascended kidney yes i can put my fingers above the renal swelling but generally i would not be able to insinuate my fingers above our renal swelling okay okay sir so you told it's a retroperitoneal mass what are your retroperitoneal mass possibilities one of of course is what are your possibilities a retroperitoneal mass sir have told you given a wonderful clue that a retroperitoneal mass is classically a something which does not have a named blood supply okay all everything that has a named blood supply becomes an organ but something which doesn't have a name blood supply becomes just i mean it's a vagabond so retroperitoneal swelling is usually a vagabond swelling now can you tell me what are your possibilities in retroperitoneum uh, <clears throat> sir uh, it can be uh, from uh, uh, organs sir or it, um... retroperitoneal or organs or uh, lymph nodes fats blood vessels so don't talk about the organs it can okay, be sir. a retroperitoneal soft tissue mass isn't oh, it yes sir and what are the common soft tissue retroperitoneal masses you can think of from the perin perinephric pad of fat uh... again my dear don't try to tell what, from which fat it will come okay It's fat just the retroperitoneal fat fat from... sir retroperitoneal fat lymph nodes nerves so if it is arising from the retroperitoneal fat what would that pathology be named as liposarcoma sir either a lipoma or a or lipoma or liposarcoma sir very good it can be a lymph node so mass isn't it yes sir so if you think it's a large lymph node mass in the retroperitoneum what yes. are the possible causes of a lymph node mass in the retroperitoneum uh sir metastatic nodes sir from or a lymphoma sir so one could be a retro metastatic node you told but usually it's unlikely for the retroperitoneal nodes to become so big isn't it yes sir but if you think it's a metastatic node what could be the possible organ of origin testicular tumor sir uh, what would be the exact location of a testicular metastatic lymph node midline sir midline and do you think it is placed in the midline no sir so so uh, i don't think it's a retroperitoneal mass a metastatic node from the uh, testis what other areas a metastatic node can come down to there on one side adrenals but of course they do not produce such a big mass yes sir anything else that comes to your mind okay never mind the second possibility you told was a lymphoma isn't it yes sir why would you state that this is a non hodgkin lymphoma i mean it can hodgkin's lymphoma as well but why did you state it's a non hodgkin's lymphoma sir a non contiguous spread sir involvement of a non contiguous group of nodes sir without any uh, symptoms constitutional symptoms of lymphomas okay non hodgkin's lymphomas can have constitutional symptoms as well it's not that it's immune from um, uh, i would prefer as an examiner that you state it's a lymphoma and then if i ask you what type of lymphoma you can tell it's possibly a non hodgkin's lymphoma because yes. that is a common place of uh, non hodgkin's lymphoma whereas yes. hodgkin's lymphoma are more more in the neck and other areas okay okay sir so it's fine to tell that it could be a lymphoma okay okay sir what other uh, lymph nodal swelling you can expect in the retroperitoneum there can be a large tuberculous lymphadenitis tuberculous, yes, well. yes sir so, so remember if you have a retroperitoneal swelling a as I, as you rightly said it can be a lymphoma b depending on the location it can be a metastatic lymph node 
C, it can be a tuberculous Okay? Yes, sir. That sounds perfect. I mean, you have really done justice to your case. It was brilliantly presented. Thank you. So, how will you investigate this gentleman? Um, yeah. sir, uh, I would like to investigate him with uh, uh, MRI of the abdomen. Okay. Sir? Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, this is Dr. Malikaju Patel. What, what's your diagnosis? Like, final diagnosis? Uh, uh, you would like to go for differential diagnosis or uh, you can't sir, a retroperitoneal? Uh, I would like to give my uh, provisional diagnosis as a retroperitoneal tumor, sir. Tumor. Uh, why? Why? Sir, why is why? Uh, what tumor like? What do you mean uh, by retroperitoneal tumor? Sir, uh, it, it most. Uh, Please go ahead. Liposarcoma. Okay, you say it's a liposarcoma. Yes, sir. Fine. Which are the other sarcoma which are common in the retroperitoneum? Rhabdomyosarcoma in pediatric, sir. No. Other commonest, as you told, is uh, leomyosarcoma, sir. Fibrosarcoma, right. malignant uh, MP, malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumor, sir. Okay, the commonest order uh, sequence is liposarcoma. Then you Leo have uh, leomyosarcoma, and of course, sometimes uh, fibrosarcoma, malignant fibrosarcoma. Rhabdomyosarcoma, yes. uh, you don't see that. Okay. Right. So, uh, these uh, sarcomas are de novo sarcomas, uh, or uh, they are uh, the transformation of a benign swelling into a malignancy. De novo. De novo, sir. Okay. What is the risk of uh, conversion? Of uh, lipoma into liposarcoma in the retroperitoneum. Sir, nowadays uh, that uh, concept is uh, obsolete. I've read, sir. Yeah. Not uh, sure. Where did you, you, you read? Right. Where, where did you read that? Sir, no, I don't remember where exactly, sir. But I, uh, my teacher. No, what is the concept? I'm sorry, I'm not aware of that. You can enlighten me, please. Sir. Uh, Lipoma turning into liposarcoma. Uh, no, liposarcoma is always de novo, but uh, it is not from uh, lipoma. Could not is not a precursor of liposarcoma. Oh, really? Is it? Where where, where did you read that? I am not aware. That's why I am asking because I remember what I have read in the textbooks, probably uh, short practice or somewhere else. I don't remember now that there are three places in the body where lipoma can turn into malignant. It has more chances of turning into malignant transformation. In One is medial part of the thigh. Yes, very good. Second re is? Retroperitoneum yes, and very back very good, of the right. shoulder, sir. That's right. That's right. That's what I remember. So this is a new concept. That's why I'm asking you, what is the reference? I would like to go through it. That's why. Okay. Sir, uh, All right. Anyway, you can you can share with me later. That's why I've given my mobile number right at the beginning. So you can share your uh, this reference later on with oh, me. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. See, now when you say retroperitoneal, uh, you said your diagnosis is retroperitoneal tumor, didn't you? But how can you say that it is a retroperitoneal tumor? Basically, it's a retroperitoneal lump. Lump. Yes, sir. Correct? And a retroperitoneal lump could be sometimes cystic in nature or sometimes it could be solid. Will you be able to find out clinically whether it is cystic or solid? Sir, with the consistency, this mass is variable in consistency, sir. Huh? Okay. Normally, normally, especially superficially placed swellings, which are the clinical tests which let you know whether a swelling is cystic or solid? This is a very basic question mm -hmm. that I'm asking. Sir, In... this is a very big swelling, sir, but... No, no, I'm asking you a little bit different question. I'm not asking related to this swelling. I'm asking you in a superficially placed swelling. Yes, sir. What are the clinical tests which uh, help you to differentiate between cystic and solid? So, so consistency and the fluctuation. Yes, very good. What else? One more. Uh, compressibility, sir. No. What do you mean by compressibility? 
sir uh, the size the size of the swelling uh, is when you press a swelling when, you, when i press the swelling, swelling diminishes in size yes, or sir. disappears and after you remove the pressure the swelling comes yes. back spontaneously on its own often with throbs uh, synchronizing with the pulse that is a compressible swelling and compressible swellings are usually vascular swellings means maybe uh, aneurysm or arterio vascular malformation that is compressibility okay so a cyst is not compressible cyst may be soft in consistency but it is not compressible uh, the third test is transillumination if a cystic yes, fluid is clear and the wall is thin it will be nicely translucent right so these clinical tests will not be able to will not be able to differentiate a deeply seated swelling like this a retroperitoneal swelling it is difficult you can have a few thrill in that okay in a cystic swelling sometimes like we demonstrated the hydrated thrill yes a big hydronephrosis is there you can demonstrate a thrill in the swelling way so that also makes it cystic swelling way right correct so but in this particular swelling when you are saying it is a retroperitoneal lump where uh, you said that it is a, there is no uh, uh, fluctuation and all that so it is difficult to say whether it is cystic or solid so therefore it is a little bit bold i feel to say that it is a retroperitoneal tumor straight away it is a retroperitoneal lump needs to be investigated and a retroperitoneal lump sometimes could be cystic in there well if it is really firm or form to hard in consistency like you said i, I guess you said that it is form or form to hard somewhere in, mm -hmm. in your presentation I, can you go to your palpation slide yes sir variable in consistency very uh, that that is okay no but variable means what are the variables uh, it had a cystic uh, firm hard uh, both components sir firm and hard both firm and it, hard it was never, it was never soft no sir firm and hard both components hard, no. it had sir so you have to take hard as uh, for uh, considering uh, what could be the possibility right so when it is hard that means it is likely to be a solid lump rather than a cystic mm. and in case of retroperitoneal lumps whenever there is a solid lump most likely it is going to be a malignant so which malignancy it is difficult to say on clinical grounds really speaking yes so i feel that even if you could come to the diagnosis that this is retroperitoneal lump most probably a solid lump and hence it could be malignant mm. that is enough as far as clinical diagnosis is concerned okay sir does any does everybody else agree with me or you can enlighten sir please on that you are right sir uh, you are perfectly right sir with your experience uh, you can only mention that it's a retroperitoneal tumor or lump as you told malignancy you can tell madam yes. because if somebody asks you because it is common malignancies then you can always elaborate and tell this 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 and all yeah what are the like tell that it's a retroperitoneal tumor probably a malignant one based on the clinical findings i think should we move on to the uh, work up sir investigations yes okay. go ahead how would you go ahead like work up the case Sir, you uh, will not like to do ultrasound for this patient. You are directly going for the MRI. Kindly do a proper workup, madam. Uh, starting from the basic to the uh, most specific. So, what uh, will be the advantage of ultrasound scan in this case? What 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 will you expect from ultrasound scan in this case? Sir, uh, the organ of or the origin, sir, but. Right? no not necessarily well okay that is one what else most important what this is in continuity with what we discussed just clean, now clean sir clean no clinic, uh, renal, from renal mass uh, no but clinically now we have said we have ruled out renal mass we have ruled out spleen now we are uh, focusing only on a retroperitoneal i'm just see this question which i am asking is a very simple question it it is only in continuity with what we just now discussed sir it will cystic or solid isn't it isn't it cystic or solid that is the most important thing that it will let you know yes sir 
is it not simple i think you are you must be knowing this answer but probably you just went off the track <laughs> as far as thinking is concerned anyway what else would you like to do which other investigation uh, sir uh, uh, basic surgical work up sir which includes uh, uh, hemogram viral markers uh, re renal function test liver function okay, test okay okay wait wait, tumor wait. So here 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 i would like to give uh, one uh, uh important this thing advice whenever we are presenting a clinical case and after you have submitted your clinical diagnosis we often ask you what how will you proceed further how will you manage generally especially in in, in deep seated pathologies like this we have to investigate isn't it so the investigation that we expect is the key investigation what is the meaning of key investigation the investigation of choice no key investigation is the one which confirms your clinical diagnosis if you could make it or it will make a diagnosis if clinical diagnosis was not possible so that is the investigation that we are interested in basically on the report of that investigation then you can carry out further secondary investigations okay. but the most important investigation that we expect in the exam is the key investigation so you have to say i would like to confirm my diagnosis and for confirmation what all investigations you require only them you have to mention most of the time i have seen uh, students answering cbc asr urine routine microscopic blood sugar for their how is it going to help you at this juncture so now please tell us what will be the key and key investigation is usually only one and in difficult cases like this it will be more than one maybe two or three also but in many so it will be limited in short what i am trying to say key investigations will be only limited investigations and in surgical practice it will most of the time involve a, a, an imaging investigation plus a uh, uh, pathological investigation in the form of maybe fnsc or a uh, true cut uh, i mean score needle biopsy and another biochemical lab investigation so only one or two or three investigations are the key investigation all right so now please go ahead and tell us apart from ultrasound scan which other investigations you would like to uh, request it we have been telling again and again in the so many classes that whenever you are getting such type of a case the first set of investigations are investigations to reach to a diagnosis Okay, sir. Second set of investigation. If you are suspecting the patient is having the malignancy, then investigation for the staging purpose. Staging purpose, yes. Sir. And third set set of the investigations are Generally. investigation for the treatment purpose. Like you want to do the surgery, you want to do the chemotherapy or radiotherapy. So you have to carry out the CBC and urea and creatinine and sugar and all those things. Okay, so that should be always an order in which you have to investigate. Okay, so the sir. first set of investigations are either the imaging studies or they are the histopsychological studies. Okay, so in sir. all cases, like in this patient, first you have to do the imaging studies and then you have to confirm your diagnosis by carrying out any histopsychological studies. Okay, so based on this, how will you proceed? Uh, sir, um, I would like to uh, do a MRI of the abdomen, sir, for this patient to confirm my diagnosis. Okay. Okay, why you want to do the MRI, sir? Uh, since it is a soft tissue swelling, the delineation will be better uh, in MRI compared to CT, sir. So I would like. Why not a CT scan in this patient after the ultrasound? Ultrasound is the first investigation. Yes, sir. No doubt about that. Yes, sir. That has to be done in the first investigation. After the ultrasound, why not the CT scan here? Sir, it can be done, sir. Now, what you will do, CT or MRI? Uh, MRI, sir. Okay. And reason for the MRI? Sir, uh, better uh, soft tissue delineation, sir. No. Okay. Yes, what are the things you won't be see good in MRI? And what are the things you will see good in CT scan? Mm. Sir, uh, if uh, you want to see the bone involvement, bone, bone involvement, which one is well, better? CT is better in in terms of uh, bone involvement, sir. Okay. 
if you want to see the vestal involvement because in the CCT. case of the ct scan we CCT. always do it a contrast enhanced way. yes sir contrast enhanced sir uh, so for the vestal involvement here i think probably in this patient you are very much concerned about the if you are thinking that there is a big retroperitoneal tumor is there yes, that what is the relation to the major blood vessels here what is the blood supply of this particular tumor so for keeping that in mind i will probably first keep as a ct as a first investigation for this patient and yes. ct will give you exactly that from where this tumor is arising it will also be there by mri i am not saying it is not by the mri but ct is relatively easy to read also it is relatively easy to carry out because you can do in the within the technical part within seconds you can carry out a ct scan while mri <coughs> will take at least 30 minutes to 45 minutes to carry out that investigation okay so that is my consensus here but i think anyone can differ from that that they may like to do the mri here okay so what did you find in the mri here sir can i show uh, sir yes madam sir uh, we have done a ct sir but uh, you <laughs> hmm? you are sharing ct and you are telling mri madam at least you can uh, describe that the finding describe the findings what you see uh uh het hetero intense uh, mass uh, occupying the whole of the uh, left side of the abdomen uh, extending into the uh, pelvis sir. okay uh, kidney is more about the finding area uh, so kidney is uh, pushed back sir both the kidneys kidney is pushed back sir uh, what about uh, the various is... major blood vessels a uh, sir yes sir so they they are not uh, no en no en not en not encased sir or abutted at any places sir so is this tumor arising from the because you are saying the kidneys are pushed back yes sir is it arising from the mesentery or is it arising from the retroperitoneum sir it is arising from the retroperitoneum sir and both the kidneys are pushed back uh yes sir it, in the second image it looks like that sir okay and what is the hounsfield unit of this what is the normal hounsfield unit of the fat 40 or the water sir. and what uh, bone a uh, bone is a uh, 1000 plus sir and water 40 is it and fat hello sir hunt fat hunt air zeros less than that is it yes so what was the ounceful unit of this particular tumor yes, sir uh, it was not uh, mentioned sir how the mri will so by that you can identify the what type of the tissue is there yes sir with you how the mri will differentiate lipoma from liposarcoma i think just a minute sir uh, ajay sir looking at the ct then now looking at the ct it appears that the primary origin of the tumor is below the level of the kidney just at the level of the kidney it is going above it but it is arising somewhere between the end of the kidney to the pelvis so actually what we see here what you are trying to emphasize priti is that the tumor is apparently arising in front of the kidney it's not it is in the upper aspect it is going it is primarily 
a, a tumor which is more on the pelvic side than on the upper abdominal side. That's what it appears in the CT scan to me. Okay. You can continue, Priti. You can continue. What are the advantages of MRI? Okay, how will you achieve uh, the pathological diagnosis? Uh, generally, FNAC or uh, uh, incisional biopsy, generally we don't do. Uh, why? What is the reason? Sir, um, if at all you want to establish the diagnosis, yes, sir. If given a choice for, as sir told, histological diagnosis, can you do any investigation? Okay, what are the types of investigations available for such uh, to establish a histological diagnosis in such cases? FNAC, sir. Okay. What else? A true cut biopsy. Yes. So, what is the difference between FNAC and needle core biopsy? Why FNAC is called FNAC? So only, only cytological uh, differentiation can be established with FNAC. Why, why is it called fine needle aspiration cytology? What so, gauge 20, needle? 22, 24. No, what gauge needle is used for this investigation? So, 22, 24. 20 to 24 or 22 to 24? 22 to 24. Are you sure? We, uh, this is a vague answer. Will you, okay, will you prefer 22 or 24? Or maybe 25? I think normally 22 is not used. No, it's a fine needle. It's a what is the disadvantage of using 22? Now tell me. Uh, Basically, it is never used that apart. But if at all you use, not even 23 we use. We prefer 24 or even better is, better is 25. Sir. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, uh, let us go ahead with uh, needle core biopsy. What is the gauge of the needle that is used normally? 16, 18, sir. Okay, sometimes maybe even 14, 14, 16 or 18, but 14 or 16. What is the advantage of needle core biopsy over FNAC? Sir, so pathological diagnosis can be established, sir. Grade. Okay. All right. So, uh, would you like to do that investigation in this case or not? Now, let us come to the point. No, sir. Why? Sir, um, sir, surgery is uh, usually surgery is the treatment of choice for uh, any retroperitoneal tumor, sir. So, um, ba based, uh, so um, I would like to go ahead with surgery rather than uh, doing a biopsy, sir. In which condition? This is Dr. Sarkaria. Yes, now, sir. In which condition you would? In, I, I agree to your statement that normally an biopsy is not required. I mean, FNAC is out. You should not be considered doing an FNA. It should not be done. I mean, if you choose to do a core biopsy, in which conditions you still go ahead with a core biopsy? Sir, uh, un, uh, organ uh, involvement, sir, or um, organ involvement, unresectable uh, tumors. Very good. So if you find it's an unresectable lesion, you will go for it. One. Number two, in what other conditions you will still go for a core biopsy? If you are unsure about the character of the mass, I mean, you are unsure whether it's a lipoma, liposarcoma or something else, yes, you can still go for a core biopsy. And suppose you do a core biopsy and the core biopsy shows it to be only 
uh, I mean, round cells only, able to come to a conclusion of what it is, then what would be your next level of investigations? Narkoma, you always used to say that, no? Not We are not going for the histological study. We will go for something else. In other words, in what investigations by which you would be able to ascertain what is the origin of the connective tumor, tumor markers, sir? Not tumor marker, ma'am. Uh, no, not tumor markers, sir, uh, something uh, else. Yes, to, sir, sorry, sir, immunohistochemistry, yeah. sir. Exactly, okay. that's perfect. Immunohistochemistry, that's what you are going to do. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, suppose you have done a core biopsy uh, for a lesion and it comes out to be a lymphoma. What will be your next line of investigation? CD20. Yes, number one, it will be immunohistochemistry to differentiate whether it's a Hodgkin's lymphoma or it's a non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and what is the subtype of the non-Hodgkin's lymphoma you are dealing with. You have established it's a non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, diffuse B-cell type. Now, what will be your next investigation? Sir, um, well, yeah, you have taken only from the node now. So what is your next level of investigation? You are now confirmed it is lymphoma. Yes, sir. You want to know whether it is gone to anywhere? Yes, a PET CT. I would like to do a PET CT, sir. Very good. You are going to go a PET CT scan. Previously, when PET CT was not available, people will go for CT, thorax, okay. abdomen, but now and, and a bone marrow. Now, the advantage of PET CT scan is you get the information about the bone marrow as well. Okay? Yes, sir. So that would be a PET CT scan. That's fine. I mean, sir, you can ask the next question. So what was done in this case? Was uh, a biopsy performed? No, no, sir. It was not performed, sir. Uh, why? Sir, um, it it is uh, it, right. from the CT, it looks like a malignant uh, Tumor, sir. Okay, all right. Then, uh, did you carry out any uh, 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 metastatic workup for this case? The investigations to look for distant metastatic disease. Did you carry out any investigations for? Okay, so what are the investigations which you would like to carry out for distant metastatic workup? Sir, uh, lymph node spread is uh, very rare. Uh, like less than uh, three percent in case of retroperitoneal tumors, sir. So no, no, I am asking you a very simple, basic question. What are the various investigations that you would like to perform? CT to chest. Uh, straight away, CT chest. See, you are not. You did not uh, uh, listen to my question. It's a very simple, basic question. In any case of malignancy, what are the various investigations which you perform? to find out distant metastatic, metastatic disease. Sir, imaging. Uh... Is, is my question difficult, sir? I am asking a simple general question. What are the various investigations which you perform find out distant metastatic disease in, in any yes, cancer. Forget about this case. Sir, uh, we we will always do a chest x-ray. Yeah, that's what, very simple, basic, that's what I'm asking. Okay. Yes, sir. So what all, what all will you look for in x-ray chest to look for this metastatic disease? Which are the various places? What, what will you look for in x-ray chest? Sir, uh, the lung parenchyma, uh, ribs. Yes. Sir. Ribs. What, what, no. In lung parenchyma, what will you look for? How do the metastatic... Cannonball, cannonball, cannonball metastasis. Okay, very good. Yes. Then, where else will you look for metastatic disease in X-ray chest? In the ribs. Ribs and vertebrae. Uh, so vertebra, sir. Vertebra, ribs and lung parenchyma. Where else? Where else? Then, any node? Where? Yes, correct. Node, Where? Mediastinal lymph nodes. Mediastinal lymph nodes. Okay. Anywhere else? Some cavity in the chest? 
pericardial cap no pleural cap <laughs> simple pleural cap do you look for pleural effusion is it yes, okay all right then further which other investigations priti you expect a retroperitoneal tumor to go to liver or, or thorax first liver first sir so the more concentration should be on the liver if it's a peripheral yes, sarcoma yes we need to go concentrate on the, the thorax more here the liver is you said the node and which we expect the sarcoma to go to the node uh, only few types of sarcoma which will uh, spread to node sir so you said commonly is liposarcoma will you get a liposarcoma no sir no sir you go for a spine or the brain which sarcoma normally go to the uh, brain secondary um, so alveolar sarcomas alveolar rhabdomyosarcoma sarcoma rhabdomyosarcoma alveolar type yes sir liposarcoma one type of liposarcoma can spread to the spine okay sir when you have a mixed round cell tumor there's a possibility of it going to that so so if that is what is advantage of doing a uh, uh, histology so sometimes we can go for a specific way of okay sir where it can go but now all you put together pet if you do all you can get that answers okay sir so what was the ct report like in this patient what did it read uh, sir i am not uh, only imaging i have put sir not the reports but you must have read the report what was the report like what did it say sir it uh, said uh, it is suggestive of a, a de differentiated liposarcoma sir of okay seat. is it uh, less malignant or more malignant more malignant sir what are the other types of liposarcomas well differentiated de differentiated myxoid round cell pleomorphic so de differentiated is highly potential and uh, it can go to the metastasis very fast uh, that it is it is almost something like anaplastic as they differentiated so what is your plan for this case uh, sir uh, uh, we have done a uh, uh, end block resection of the tumor sir uh, with Whether we have done a uh, ureter catheterized pre-op here? Uh, yes, sir. So you have done a URS and catheterized ureter, or you have? No, uh, no, sir, no, sir. Not catheterized, sir. Sir, uh, we have done a IVU also, sir. There was no, no, not ureter was uninvolved, sir. So I have not done it, sir. So do you expect such surgery to be uh, simple or difficult? before you go ahead actually with surgery would you expect it to be reasonably fairly easy moderately easy or difficult difficult sir are you sure yes sir okay it is extremely difficult and it is extremely demanding okay retroperitoneal surgery is very difficult it is very demanding so it is not to be taken lightly one question i can see here in the chat box that don't we need a pathological diagnosis to plan management and this question i think is valid because if your diagnosis says uh, the co needle core biopsy says it is lymphoma would you operate no so don't you think that uh, needle core biopsy is essential this because this question is valid yes sir so would any but anybody else uh, what would you like to say sir would you like to add anything to this but uh, most often mri will be able to delineate the lymphoma and sarcoma including the liposarcoma okay. mri can put you that it is a not a lipoma liposarcoma so when it is an uh, operable tumor within that reach of operability uh, total excision biopsy is much better than going for a, because we are not sure such a large margin taking one corneal is going to be effective or it is again going to dump in the blind way so better is an operable tumor the consensus is go for an operation 
when you are in doubt definitely whether you are clinically mri is not able to tell you whether it is in uh, liposarcoma or lymphoma then definitely you are justified in doing that madam is the Histopathological report. Yes, sir. I have, sir. Okay, now that it is a de differentiated liposarcoma. Yes, sir. What's your next plan of action? I would like to manage this patient further. Sir, uh, immunohisto. Okay, that report you have? Uh, no, sir, it is not it. Come, sir, only this we have got, sir, today. But you have sent it for immunohistochemistry? Um, yes, sir. Okay, fine. What's the next plan? Awaiting, at least we can discuss. Sir, um, surveillance, sir. No, you told D differentiated. Yes, sir. And uh, PT4 and next MX. What do you want to do? Grade 3, isn't it? It's always yes, a grade. Yes, sir. Okay. Grade. How do you, how do you grade the uh, sarcomas? Sir, uh, grade 1 to 1, three, 3, sir. Okay. Is there any TNM staging for retropatron sarcomas? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, what is that? Uh, T is T zero is uh, no evidence of a primary tumor. T one is less than five centimeter. T two uh, five to ten centimeters. T three more than ten to fifteen centimeters. T four is more than fifteen centimeters, sir. N zero is uh, no nodes. N uh, N X is nodes cannot could not be assessed. N one is regional lymph node, lymph node metastasis. M0 is no metastasis, M1 is presence of clinical uh, clinic, uh, metastasis, sir. CM0, CM1 is uh, distant metastasis, PM1 is uh, distant microscopic metastasis. Uh, okay. This is a GTNM staging, sir. How will you grade it? Uh, with uh, um, the, uh, uh, tumor necrosis differentiation, necrosis and the mitotic count. Your sir. mitosis is 14 into 16 per uh, high power pair. So grade, grade 2, sir. So necrosis More. also, uh -huh. necrosis there is a three grades. Yes, sir. Necrosis we have only two grades. Any role of chemotherapy? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, a regimen called MAID regimen is uh, being used, sir. Mesna, adriamycin, iphosphamide and dacarbazin. What is the role of Mesna? To prevent hemorrhagic cystitis. Caused by iphosphamide, sir. So, what other chemotherapy drug will cause uh, hemorrhagic uh, cystitis? Cy cyclophosphamide. Okay, what is the role of radiotherapy in uh, retropatronal tumor? Sorry, uh, retropatronal sarcomas. Um, sir, um, it can be uh, pre-operative or uh, post-operative, sir. Or intraoperative, sir. If, if you have a diagnosis before surgery, for some reason you would have done core biopsy, guided biopsy. Yes, sir. And if it's a poorly differentiated one, okay, yes, sir. with no clear planes, you can definitely go for preoperative radiotherapy. Okay, sir. Go for uh, surgery. Yes, sir. Planes will be better linearated after uh, radiotherapy, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any mean no? When suppose the node is positive, suppose you get the pathology one node. Yes, sir. What will be the staging you put that? N1, sir. Oh, N1 means what stage it comes? It is a... Stage 4, sir. Oh, stage 4 only for a peripheral carcinoma, peripheral sarcoma. For retroperitoneal sarcoma, N1 is still stage 3B. Okay, sir. So there is a difference in that both when you have a retroperitoneal sarcoma and the peripheral sarcoma. Peripheral sarcoma, any N1 automatically it takes it to the stage 4. But yes, here sir. it is putting on the stage 3. 3B. Okay, sir. 
What do you mean by desmoplastic reaction, madam? You know? Sir, I'm not able to hear you, sir. Desmoplastic reaction. Are these tumors likely to cause desmoplastic? Yes, sir. Reaction? Yes, sir. Okay. See, many times it so happens that because of the desmoplastic reaction, uh, there can be involvement of the adjacent organs. Yes, sir. And you may have to do end block resection. Uh, there are instances where splenectomy is done along with the you know tumors. Yes, sir. Okay, part of the pancreas is also removed. So some of these tumors can cause desmoplastic reaction. Okay. So yes, sir. Only then you That's might require you know extensive resection. Otherwise, uh, uh, as you done in this patient, you can take out the tumor. Uh, yeah, I know. So, Possibly, with the plastic reaction is a one reason why we insist on MRI. MRI, yes, sir. Because uh, CT will not be able to pick up much better, but MRI can definitely take up that. Uh, There's no plastic reaction. Yes, sir. That is why uh, MRI is preferred over uh, CT. Is uh, for accuracy is more. It's a uh, more than hundred percent sensitivity is there, nearly hundred percent, and uh, there's no plastic reactions. And also, yes, it can find if there is any recurrence tissue when you are going for a re recurrence is also well delineated by MRI. So the first preferred is uh, MRI, and sometimes you can also do it. Okay, sir. What is the prognosis you are expecting with this? Uh, sir, um, since the uh, grade is uh, FN, uh, grade is three, and dedifferentiated sarcoma with the size of the tumor, I am expecting a poor. The patient had morphonite features. You said yes, sir. So anything which you have were able to note out in the abdomen with the morphinoid, any what changes will I mean you are doing the surgery? If you look for anything particular to look with the morphinoid, these changes would have been there. Um, Possibility no, of aneurysm is high. No, but uh, we did not uh, see, sir. Cardiovascular system also, it was uh, there was no sin, mitral valve prolapse. It was not there, sir. I think it's yes, done well. Can I go, sir? Do you have any question, ma? Sir, um, sir, this histological grading only. I was uh, very. In, sir, whether to go ahead with histological grading, histo histopathological diagnosis before the surgery or not, sir? Robert, sir. I would I would prefer to have a histological uh, diagnosis uh, before going ahead with uh, this case. Unless, of course, the radiologist is 100% sure and he can definitely rule out the possibility of lymphoma, uh, then it's different. But otherwise, uh, if he's not sure, as you also said correctly, I think if he's not sure, and then if you're also not sure, then it is better to go for uh, core biopsy before embarking on surgery. That's what uh, I uh, Why is it not uh, indicated, sir? Okay, then I think now it's time for me to chip in. Uh, the question is, uh, the other images, uh, a well-done uh, 3D reconstructed CT images was not shown. I don't know what was the reason. We did a vascular reconstruction and it had a L4 level origin of the blood supply, singular blood supply. And it was found to arise from the gerotas on the right side uh, along the crevice between the IVC and the kidney. And principally, sir, uh, there were not much of nodal tissues at all in the scan. In fact, this patient presented to us with the CT scan. So we didn't have an opportunity to consider an ultrasound at a much later point of time. Okay. Uh, regarding the surgery per se as such, uh, the true cut biopsy are a penne question. Even the world uh, sarcoma guidelines on the retroperitoneum is not very clear on FNAC and true cut. The biggest challenge is if it is a truly retroperitoneal tumor, unless you go through a retroperitoneal axis, many times we do not place an incision along the posterior wall. That is the only concern they mentioned. But then if there are a true solid tumor, all through a solid tumor, then definitely a true cut is recommended. And as well as, sir, everybody has been pointing out, if it is having multiple lymph nodal origin, true cut is mandatory. 
so these are the few things where uh, guidance has been clear apart from that especially if you are planning for a new adjuvant therapy then you need to have a biopsy these are the four indications we had into consideration mm. again as everybody pointed out the surgery is going to be technically demanding no doubt about it but then the options were if you are going to remove an r0 resection that becomes the best way to approach it maybe except for the three things which the current guidelines says true cut is minimum mandate be prior to the surgery all other tumors the uh, the current approach says it is okay to go ahead with directly for the surgery as such mm -hmm. the main concerns for that is many times as many of the faculty here pointed out it may not be an up because this tumor if you could see there is a very heterogeneous uh, presentation uh, the tumor does had solid elements it had predominantly lipomatous element so we were in fact considering whether we should take a true cut from the solid element because mm. the radiologist felt sir that may not be yielding i don't know on what grounds because surprisingly the pet images were also not shown because if you could see the pet images uh, can you unshare your uh, powerpoint of priti so uh, i would try to share uh, uh, some images for you so one moment i'm going to share you the screen at this point of time i'm not sure one second so if you could see um this is the pet so nowhere it was very typical or classical to have a definitive uh, uptake so this was one reason uh, biopsy was uh, not considered and uh, the radiologist was pretty much unsure about how much uh, he is going to take it one moment then uh, one second and uh, this was the vascular thing except if you could see uh, the vessel which is arising from the l4 level this was a single feeder but uh, please note this tumor had major venous drainage to directly into the ivc especially above the kidney and it also had potential origin from the right kidney gyrotas the tumor was also lifting up the pancreas and going beneath the pancreas on the other side but luckily we were it was just up to the upper part of the pancreas but apart from that i guess at this point of time the capsule was intact uh, r0 pathological r0 resection with the least bounded margin where close to the pancreas which was 1 mm there were no breach of the tumor as such but we did have a multidisciplinary meeting with the oncologist which uh, they have very carefully said patient needs a follow up therapy at this point of time they said he is just in the 10th or 8th post op day so we are yet to have finally uh, but i think pathologists are very categorically said immunohistochemistry chemistry may not yield something more but only thing they are trying to do an oncomine assay so that may help uh, the oncologist to choose more appropriate drugs but again a word of caution monoclonal antibodies have coming up in a big way in new adjuvant therapy for retroperitoneal tumors but not in the adjuvant therapy set as such because many times only surgical re resections because in published literature up till five repeat surgeries have been is an accepted uh, class for uh, these type of liposarcomas and they are very notorious and they do not respond to any uh, whatever be the best of the adjuvant therapy it doesn't seem to be responding to that that's the most updated literature what we have maybe other faculties can also tell their view point the biggest study published is having a meta analysis of 400 cases across the globe 
all others are case of 2 3 like that only but maybe if other seniors have experience i would be willing to definitely take their input sir thank you very much can i well sir what is the role of retroperitoneoscopy ah uh, sir i am i am actually sir to go in only took me about 45 minutes there was the abdomen was stretched with the tumor sir if you could see the ct even in the midline we could not yes. enter in fact lower abdomen was edematous because of the ibc compression i would say but retroperitoneoscopy i do not have experience sir uh, maybe if you can share if you have any publication based on it i will be definitely willing to learn maybe smaller tumors yes sir small tumor, not for this large hmm. uh, usually sir yeah, the most uh, important thing now is the uh, functional adrenal tumors they all now moved from transperitoneal to retro peritoneal pancreatic tumors they are trying to do the tail tumors by retroperitoneoscopy renal tumors heminephrectomies and other things they have also started to attempt retroperitoneoscopically but with the advent of lapros uh, sorry the robotic surgery retroperitoneoscopy is catching up in a big way and the more so retroperitoneoscopy is done with uh, like uh, single axis multiple thing because the robotic arms on retroperitoneoscopy seems to be advantageous but i think um, uh, let the boys have very clear information sir because uh, they will first jump on talking about retroperitoneoscopy otherwise for the exams but it is a very valid point small uh, retroperitoneal tumors especially the doubtful neural crest tumors and the metanephros and pronephros originating tumor i would say if it is 2 3 cm again the question of needle biopsy is very doubtful they say if you can remove in full you go ahead with the scope and remove it for an excision biopsy somehow uh, people have been pushing towards a excision biopsy or a resection primarily rather than for biopsy sir but i think except for this three four clear indications where needle biopsies are recommended i say surgical seems to be the current way of approach according to the current literature sir i think we How have taken time? sir i think we have taken more than enough time sir i'm sorry about that i took another 5 7 minutes of uh, time so thank you preeti for uh, spending time and uh, sharing your experience so i would re- recommend to uh, dr srinivasan sir uh, uh, your pg is ready sir she had some challenges with the shrividya shrividya sorry <coughs> shrividya shrividya are you with us she said she is ready sir. Yes, sir. I'm ready, sir. Okay, ma'am. Please share your PowerPoint and start yes, your presentation. Sir, are you able to see me, sir? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Shall I start, sir? Yeah, please introduce yourself, your unit chief, HOD, and start your presentation. Akana, we are yet to see your PowerPoint, ma'am. Shinwasan sir. Yes sir. Maybe I will need your help I guess sir. Yes sir I'll see sir. She is started there but uh, you are you all right ma? Srividya. Srividya. Sir and there sir can you hear me sir? I can where is your screen? I told you be ready with your share screen. Yes sir. Where you you brought it on the desktop or not? It's there, sir. When? What time you are going I to share it? I have opened it from the desktop. Sharing also. 
Sri Vidya, what is the problem? You tell me. Sir, are you able to see my presentation? Sir? Yeah. Yeah. Go to Shall the slide. Sir? Go to the slide show. Yes, sir. Slide show. Press F5, Kanna. Press F5. Yeah. Okay, my, you go ahead. Go ahead. Just uh, introduce yourself and keep going. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm Dr. Shri Vidya, sir. Uh, doing MS General Surgery in Kansar Medical College, sir. My guide is Dr. Srinivasan sir, sir, Professor of General Surgery. She's our chief, sir. Uh, today I'm presenting a case of a postmenopausal woman who is 44 years old, hailing from Coimbatore, belonging to a lower socioeconomic status. Can I have to advance the slides? Complaints of lumps in Dr. Srividya, you yes, have sir. to advance the slides. If you could see on your right side, lower screen next to number 68%, you have something like a full screen mode. Can you press that with your mouse? On the right side, lower part, you have 68%. Yes, sir. You're not able to do that? You tap the second slide. Okay, you just keep tapping the slides. Can you see my slides, sir? Tap the second slide. You are still in the first slide. Okay. You say, okay, okay, I'll share when. Already we are used. Unshare, I will share. You pip. I told you to get ready in the afternoon. Go to the second sir, slide. Don't worry, sir. Don't worry. Go to, go to the second slide. Sir, you can share the now, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Dr. Shivadhyay, please go ahead. Yes, sir. She came with complaints of lumps in right breast in seven months. And also she came with complaints of pain in right breast in three months, sir. Along with redness in right breast since one month, sir. And... Uh, a history of presenting illness. The patient was apparently normal seven months ago, sir. Then she developed a lump in right breast, which was insidious in onset inch, and uh, it was initially sized from one into one centimeter, which she noticed at uh, first while bathing. It rapidly progressed to the current size, which is six times more than the initial size. It is also associated with the dull, aching pain, continuous pain at rest. It turns into a shooting pain on touch. Pain is not radiating to any other side. For which she has consulted a local doctor and was given antibiotic and an iris. Picture. Follow which she uh, followed which her pain relieved, but the uh, size of the swelling was not relieved, sir. not reduced. Uh, she also had a history of phlegmatic discoloration of skin associated with the associated nodule in the right side of the breast, right side of the breast, with no with pain, no ulceration, no discharge from the nodules. Sir. History of nipple retraction was present since one month. No history of nipple discharge. There was no history of trauma. There was no history of lump in the other breast or axilla. There was no history of ulceration or of fever. There was no history of low backache, uh, pain in the limbs. There was no history of cough, hemoptysis, or dyspnea. No history of pain abdomen, yellowish discoloration of eyes. There was no history of seizures. There was no history of headache or blurring of vision. There was no history of loss of weight or loss of apparatus. Uh, in past history, uh, she was not a diabetic or hypertensive or asthmatic patient or uh, had any thyroid disorder. No history of previous surgeries in the past. She has no drug allergies, no similar complaints uh, or any other surgeries in the other breast or this breast before, sir. No history of use of HRT or chest wall irradiation. Uh, personal history, she takes a normal diet, a missile diet, has normal, uh, she has a disturbed sleep due to pain at night, sir. She has normal bowel and bladder habits, no history of consumption of alcohol, smoking, or tobacco intake, sir. 
in the menstrual history and obstetric history uh, she attained menarche at the age of 13 years uh, she was married for 20 years and she is a nalipara woman with a regular monthly menstrual cycle associated with increased bleeding and pain which was associated with the pain and clots for which she took some medication and it uh, it used to relieve her menopause uh, she attained her she attained menopause at 38 years of age and uh, now she is in menopause she attained the menopause about 7 uh, years ago general examination patient to patient was examined in a sitting position after getting consent from her please, in please. a well known uh, she was examined uh, uh, when please vidya me me i interrupt wait wait let the examiner yes, let the examiner ask the question yes sir on the history then you proceed okay. yes sir Go to your first slide. Yes, sir. Yeah. Hi, Doctor yes, Srividya. I would like to ask you one question. At the end of the history, uh, what do you think you are dealing with? Yes, sir. So uh, I am thinking about dealing with the uh, swelling in or uh, right breast, which is which could be a malignant lesion, because according to the age, she is a forty-four years old female, sir. She is old. Old. A middle-aged female, no sir, middle-aged female sir. She is a middle-aged female and she is nally parrot. Okay. All right, all right. That's what I wanted to ask. That's it. That's it. And also, she is nally parrot and she also has complaints of uh, pain and a blackish discoloration. It's all right. So I, this is and, uh, at the age of thirty-eight, she got menopause. Yes, sir. She attained early menopause, sir. It actually right. contradicts. We've gone into the history the... of that. Any reason? Yes, any, any anything which you could have make it out because thirty-eight is not very very premature. Yes, sir. What are the possibilities you think? You said she has got uh, she... bleeding pain. She's taken some tablets. Had the... adenomyosis, sir. Did she say that she has got adenomyosis? What are the likely the history? That's what Sir is asking. Is early menopause? Sir, uh, she will go for a premature yes. menopause. Unless it's a hormonally, you get a problem. Uh, she has infertility, sir. That's what she has. She has history of infertility. She is an early parent woman. She was married for twenty years. And she has. She also gives history of passing clots and increased bleeding. How do you know it is menopause? I mean, suppose you are at the age of thirty-eight. So you are seeing she has uh, loss of menstrual cycle for a one year. Cessation of bleeding. Cessation of monthly period uh, for one year, sir. What biochemical abnormality? It has been seven is years now, sir. Is there is any way of hormonal study to say that uh, this menopause? What will happen to the estradiol? What will happen to the FSH? Estradiol will be reduced, sir. What will happen to FSH? These two hormones will be will be indicative Sorry, of the pass. So estradiol, if you get thirty, uh, it will be more in favor. FSH will be increased. It will be go for the forty milli units per liter. So that will be indicative of that because. Any case which is coming to you with the 38 years with the prematurity, premature uh, menstrual cycle, you need to do, look for that. Something. What is the reason? But and your history, you presented yes, the patient sir. presented with a pain ulcer, pain and uh, how do you explain that? Sir, uh, at, the, at first she did not have any pain, sir. What is the now normal? Now there is skin ulcer. Normal turnover time of the calcium breast. Sorry, sir. Normally, how do you expect the growth of the tumor in the calcium breast? Rapidly progressing in size, sir. What do you mean by that? What is the doubling time of the calcium breast? Don't know, sir. It is three to six months. So that is normally that what we are expecting. Okay. Now we don't get uh, yes, within a three months time, six times increase is not a possibility. What's normally got unless it is a very high grade tumor which you are expecting. 
so can you why not it is a inflammatory yes, reaction when the by history why not it is a abscess turning into a amoeboma I mean uh, antibioma you had yes, rapidly sir, had a pre so huh? yes sir but she does not give any previous history of the similar complaints sir no antibioma can be for abscess it to so like can, to can, to condition it can come size. No, you are mentioned in your history. And she also complains of nipple retraction, sir. Okay. No pain and redness. That's what sir is asking. Pain and redness. Why don't you think yes, of an inflammatory condition rather than going in for a malignancy? So you had to substantiate. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, the, actually the size has and the duration is seven months sir. before that she did not have any other complaints and uh, it has grown significantly in the seven months sir. slowly what was the lump size I mean, rapidly what was the lump size when you were seeing seven months back now it is 18 into 20 centimeters seven months 18 back. into 12 centimeters sir. no no when you was first not sir, uh, seven so months back it was it was uh, three into four centimeters sir. So what would have been the time it would have been originated? If you get a three centimeter lump, what would be the yes, sir. origination? How many cycles it would have gone? To produce uh, one centimeter lump, how many cycles it will have take? So it takes nearly 30 yes, cycles yes, for sir. taking one centimeter solely. So don't say, use the word apparently normal, all that predictions don't use. You can say the patient has noticed the swelling yes. seven months back. It was three centimeter, and it is growing in this size. Okay, go ahead. Yes, sir. Just dull aching pain. What could be the cause? And you're telling it is severe. Continuous dull yes, aching pain. Pain, pain. Yes, Continuous and dull. Aching. How to explain this? That is one. The second yes, question yes. is: Remove your headphones, man. You come to the speaker. Blackish discoloration of the skin. Sir, uh, she could have actually uh, had infiltration of nerves uh, to which have nerves, a continuous dilation. Which, which nerves get infiltrated, madam? In that way, can you tell us? Which normally, nerve? Normally, nerve signals, sir. normally which malignant nerve? breast cancer uh, don't have pain, isn't it? Unless the deeper. Yes, nerve, sir. Normally, it does not have. Yes, yes, so here you are skin is red, okay, and cause for blackish noodle. Sir, sorry, sir. Black sir, red uh, she had, yes, sir. Nodule is there in the right side of the breast, sir. Okay. You told black color. Black color or nodule? Yes. Sir. You said black. Sir, there is a nodule with the skin change, sir. Okay, skin changes can be explained, madam. No, but it will not be black usually. Yeah. It's a skin change, sir. Nodule is there with a skin change, sir. Skin discoloration is there. Is it common in the is there, is there any uh, dimpling or puckering? Sir, she has not got it, sir. sir. She has got it, I think, uh, told the examination findings. I okay, guess. okay. Uh, yes, she has yet to start uh, with general examination. Am I right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ah, yes, sir. Go ahead. Right. The tumor was different. There is a blackish discoloration. So, I'm presenting my general examination, sir. Patient was examined in a sitting position in a well lit room with her informed consent and exposed uh, adequately in the presence of a female attender. Uh, she was conscious, oriented, uh, and ECOG score was 1. Uh, pulse rate was 120 to 80 mm, 120 by 80 mm HD. Uh, pulse rate was uh, 90 beats per minute, DP was 120 mm HD, pulse uh, rate was 16 beats per minute. She was uh, 165 centimeters tall, 64, uh, 64, uh, 84 kg weight. Her BMI is uh, 19.5. Why do you want to put her on ECOG 1? You said patient is apparently normal, no? She disappeared. She's 
ശ്രീവിദ്യ If there is no Wi-Fi, I think she can go on um, hotspot from the mobile. That is another option. Sometimes it works well. She is getting connected. <clears throat> Shall I advance the slides, sir? Yes. <clears throat> I'll go through the pictures first, sir. This is the picture. This is the discoloration scene, sir. previous history there was no no black mole or something nothing was there no yeah that's what even i was thinking whether uh, it's like mal looking like malignant melanoma or what yeah that is a picture really unexpected uh, unusual things huh? yeah or whether it is a very fast growing tumor is causing ischemic necrosis of the skin overlying mm -hmm. i don't know So the history patient didn't tell properly, sir. We said uh, 38 years one, and she said, did she have any native treatment? She didn't say. I said, why you are uh, delaying, delay in coming? She said it was painless, so I didn't come. I asked any, did they take any native treatment? Mm -hmm. She was hesitant to say. I do not know whether they took any native treatment. Probably they should have taken some. Not give any history of native treatment, sir. But uh, she has gone to a local doctor. For which uh, they have given antibiotics and analgesics. She had prescriptions for that, sir. To start with breast examination. Yes, sir. On examination of breast, I uh, inspection. The patient was uh, with the consent of the patient. I examined in the uh, well lit uh, room in a sitting position with arms by her side. Bilateral breast were asymmetrical. Uh, right breast appeared to be bigger than the left breast, and uh, at a higher level compared to the left breast. Uh, fullness of breast involving all four quadrants of breast, which is in irregular in surface, and uh, pudy orange appearance was there, sir, and presenting in the entire breast. A blackish nodule of three into two centimeter was present over the up right upper quadrant of right breast, uh, with it, which is well defined mar, which had well defined margins and blackish discoloration of the skin over the nodule. No scars, no dimpling, no tethering, no ulceration was present, sir. with you first of all uh, inspection whether you will not bring it in the inspection second in this case with that uh, large uh, nodular lesion or the black spot definitely that area will go for tethering that is it is fixed you, it is you fixed. have no then in that area definitely you will have the tethering so don't bring tethering into the inspection and be yes, careful sir. when you say there's no tethering tethering is a palpatory finding Yes, sir. It is yes, sir. The drain is about to turn. Yes, sir. Okay. Examination of nipple areola complex. Right side of nipple areola complex appear at a higher level compared to the left side. Uh, and it was circumferential. And she also had a circumferential retraction of nipples. No nipple discharge, sir. Inspection by arms raised above. 
pudi orange appearance was visible involving the entire breast bilateral inframammary folds are free of lumps sir. inspection by leaning forward right breast does not fall freely for freely forward and it was attached to chest wall inspection by pressing against her waist uh, there was no evident uh, changes over the lump sir inspection in se semi recumbent position lump and uh, pdo are more prominent inframammary folds were free of lump sir on palpation examination in semi recumbent position local rise of temperature was present over the entire breast and tenderness was also present in uh, variable areas inspectory findings were confirmed a lump of 18 into 12 cm was present in right side breast involving all four quadrants of breast including nipple area complex with the undefined margins irregular surface variable consistency fixed to skin because she had pudi orange appearance fixed to the breast tissue and also fixed to chest wall a nodule of 3 into 2 cm present in upper outer quadrant with well defined margins which was immobile and hard in consistency examination of axilla inspection no full on inspection there was no fullness there was no nodules or ulceration over the axilla palpation a 2 into 2 cm central and apical group of lymph node were palpable sir which was uh, single which was mobile and hard in consistency tender well defined margins smooth surface skin over the swelling appeared to be normal sir other group of axillary lymph nodes were not palpable opposite breast and axilla were normal sir bilateral supraclavicular fossa was normal this on systemic examination a patient had a cvs s1 s2 present no murmurs rs bilateral ar entry present no added sounds per abdomen per abdomen soft and non tender no organomegaly bowel sounds were present sir uh, cns bilateral pupils reacted to light nfnd uh, skull and spine examination were normal sir parietal and pervaginal examination also normal sir on summary on summarizing a 44 year old post menopausal woman presented progressive with a pro progressively increasing swelling which was painful since 7 months associated with the blackish nodule over the lump since 1 month on examination uh, 18 into 12 cm lump in right breast which is variable in consistency irregular in surface undefined margins are present occupying all four quadrants including the nipple areola complex uh, it is immobile fixed to skin uh, fixed to breast tissue fixed to chest wall with retraction of nipple uh, nipple areola complex was pulled up and pushed to right side sir associated with the nodule of 3 into 12, 2 cm present in upper outer quadrant with undefined margins present with the mobile um, with the, which is mobile 2 into 2 cm central and apical lymphadenopathy was present uh, with no features suggesting of uh, metastasis at present uh, we haven't investigated this patient yet sir we are investigating her with the ultrasound So no, no, wait. Uh, wait, wait. We 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 can't go ahead with the investigation straight away. Uh, we would like to know what is your clinical diagnosis. Sir, uh, according to the palpatory finding, she had hard and uh, it was actually variable in consistency, sir. The swelling no, was see, you don't. Uh, you have already what summarized. Is the you have already summarized. Now we want a statement of diagnosis. You start from the sir, age, history, and the brief finding and tell. What is the probable diagnosis? Straight yes, away, sir. don't so go for palpation. Half a side way, no. Yes, sir. Sir is asking, what is your probable diagnosis based on the history? So, what is my your diagnosis? Problem? Is carcinoma right breast, sir? Is a malignancy. It could be a malignancy, sir. That's what. See, uh, see, uh, when you give a diagnosis, you know what you should remember. we are interested in basic diagnosis right now will the patient may be having hypertension this that that is okay for complete diagnosis but basically what are we interested in knowing the anatomical part of the diagnosis and pathological aspect of the diagnosis isn't it yes sir now anatomical diagnosis means what which region of the body which organ tissue yes sir is, is a, breast. He, here is it breast. is breast right yes, here sir. it is breast why breast why not skin why not squamous cell carcinoma of the skin Uh, because it actually involves the breast tissue, sir. Here, on palpation, we yeah, we that is okay. Yeah, that is that, that. That's all. Everything. I mean, uh, I agree with what what we all say. But I hear. I want to tell you one dictum. 
which you must always remember that uh, any swelling arising in a specific anatomical area okay is said to be uh, is uh, is taken for granted that it is arising from that particular organ which is there in that particular anatomical area that means it if it is arising in the region of the breast then it yes, has to be from the breast unless proven otherwise yes sir if there is a swelling somewhere in the neck it is generally a lymph node origin unless proven otherwise unless of course yes. if it is in the region of the thyroid it is thyroid unless proven otherwise if it is in the groin hernia unless proven this is a general dictum I mean, and that is also very important in that is by breast all right now the anatomical aspect is now what is the pathological yes. aspect of the diagnosis sir uh, we have pathologically uh, malignant. we cannot it is malignant a, basically malignant, malignant because all the features are going in favor of malignancy right according to the history and examination then why carcinoma of the breast can, with naked eye can you see the cells and say that this no, is carcinoma no sir. no sir but still you said that carcinoma because you have to say that it is a malignant tumor arising in the right breast most yes. probably carcinoma yes sir most probably yes. carcinoma because most carcinoma probably. is the commonest malignant tumor arising from the breast yes, yes. are you aware of any other malignancies other so than carcinoma? carcinoma sarcoma very good what sarcoma. else uh, they are not common but just for the sake of knowledge lymphoma may are lymphoma yes sir but commonest is carcinoma yes sir right okay all right yes sir all right so uh can you tell me what are the um, uh, various uh, clinical features which go in favor of carcinoma of the breast sir uh, she has uh, skin change uh, beauty orange was there and it is a uh, hard in hard to uh, variable inconsistency sir involving entire breast with in the presentation you have put it is fixed to the skin because beauty orange is it a beauty orange it denotes it is fixed to the skin yes sir no anything can get the fixed even mastitis can produce the fixed skin yes sir it's mastitis can also yes sir infiltration no. of uh, ducts sir infiltration of uh, lymphatic plexus sir that is, that is causing involvement you are saying not the word fixity is not the word hmm? yes sir yes sir what is the cause of retraction of nipple sir uh, she is having lesion uh, mechanism of retraction of the nipple You said that there is a yes. circumferential retraction of the nipple, isn't it? Okay. Apart from circumferential yes, retraction, what other type of retraction that you know of? Slit-like retraction. Very sir. good. Slit-like retraction. In which condition it is seen? In ductal tissue, sir. Okay. All right. Now, what is the mechanism of uh, retraction of nipple in case of carcinoma of breast? Sir, if the lesion is there uh, in subarealar area. it will cause infiltration of lactiferous ducts okay circumferentially causing the retraction of uh, nipple sir uh, sorry what happens with lactiferous ducts i didn't get you exactly infiltration sir infiltration of lactiferous ducts are you sure is that the mechanism it is not the infiltration of lactiferous duct it is the contraction of collagen fibers in the fibrous tissue which surrounds the malignancy and because of which there is a pull on lactiferous ducts and that will cause ah, retraction okay. of nipple okay. similar mechanism is there which causes dimpling or puckering of the skin there is yes, pull sir, on the suspensory ligament yeah ligam. yes yes that's right okay all right last to the test for madam It is totally Sir? immobile. Sir, is it totally immobile? The mass lump is totally immobile. The lump was totally immobile, sir. It was attached to the chest wall. Okay. It was not moving in any direction, sir. Okay, then the small nodule is separate from this big lump. Small nodule. There's a small nodule. Is it separate from this big lump? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In the right side of the breast, sir. What do you feel is the cause for this lump? Possibly, sir. Uh, why only in that area? So, see, one she has a large lump and one more lump. How do you explain these two lumps? Multi uh, centric lesions, multi focal lesion. Oh. She could have a new origin there. So that is then multi origin means it's a skin cancer. Then it becomes not the breast cancer. 
the skin you don't get the breast tissue no no sir multifocal lesion sir all in that the is same in the breast yes sir so what do you get a nodule if you are getting in the skin what are the possibilities uh it has spread through the lymphatics to the skin sir can this tumor spread within the breast madam that's what i think probably sir is asking this is large lump yes sir okay so yes sir it could spread unlikely multifocal when there is a large primary lesion so yes sir you can always think of spread of the lesion and as sir told uh, you can think of uh, cutaneous nodule as you told skin is infiltrated yes sir right it is black and it is tethered so the possibility yes, that from this primary tumor it, it might have spread to the skin that is yes, yes sir okay, okay you mentioned about the lymphatics the cutaneous lymphatics ma sir breast cutaneous lymphatics what are what are the peculiarities cutaneous lymphatics peculiarities sir most of the time it is uh, zonal or it is within the confined area it do not communicate very well with the neighboring area that is why very often we get a uh, the the cutaneous nodules that localize to the particular area their communication is less but this okay. i am not sure whether it been called it as a nodule such a 3 into 2 cm robert sir what is your feeling uh, well, can we call it as a nodule we could it's a bit uh, difficult to say i mean uh we would like to actually examine that uh, ourselves then we can get some idea uh, will you please uh, uh, sir dr sri vidya will you please uh, explain that nodule again sir it is a 3 into 2 cm nodule with uh, very defined uh, margins mm -hmm. which is raised above the skin sir that's why i said it is a nodule uh, no no what are the dimensions 3 by 2 by and what's the depth Sir, it is point uh, five uh, one centimeter depth, sir. Three by two by one centimeter. One centimeter depth, sir. And is it free from the skin? No, sir. It was attached to the skin. And is it uh, moving separately from the breast tissue, underlying breast tissue? No, sir. So it's coming from within the breast. You mean to say? Yes, sir. It was within the breast. Oh, okay, okay. All right, all right. Yeah. So it must be a part of the tumor, I suppose. Yes, sir. Ah, uh -huh. and uh, from uh, this uh, clinical finding, uh, what do you think would be the type of the breast carcinoma? Sir, uh, it could be a inflammatory carcinoma breast. Oh, really? Yes, When do you get inflammatory carcinoma? Sir, uh, actually, it contradicts. Uh, it could. It is usually associated with pregnancy. Ah, but. Uh, she is having alternate variable uh, areas she is having tenderness and uh, the consistency is variable sir and uh, so associated with pregnancy ma inflammatory carcinoma inflammatory carcinoma uh, so it will not occur with third pregnancy no sir it can sir it can occur what is but, the relationship uh, with the pregnancy and this sir there is no relationship with the pregnancy and inflammatory carcinoma most commonly uh, usually it occurs could it be medullary carcinoma yes sir the possibility is there it is rapidly growing and it is involving most of the breast most of the breast sir so sir. rather than a well defined or, or rather than a circumscribed swelling it appears yes, to be causing the enla enlargement of the entire breast yes sir hmm? opposite breast is normal no Yes, sir. Opposite breast was normal. Axilla also free, sir. So, medullary carcinoma has more predilection for bilateral. Yes. What is the consistency of the medullary carcinoma? Sir, uh, variable consistency, sir. It will not be much hard. Yes, sir. Firm to. Of a medulla. Type. Variable consistency, sir. Okay. Okay. Uh, what are the uh, the prognostic uh, fact uh, okay before that let us go ahead with the uh, clinical staging what do you think is the stage of the disease sir uh, t4c so stage is uh, stage 3 sir stage 3b because it is involving t4 uh, 
In TNM staining, it is T4B, N1, MX. So we haven't assessed the metastasis yet, sir. So it is T4B, sir. T4B or C, madam? T4C, sir. Sorry, T4C, sir. And nodal? N1, sir. MX, sir. So you mentioned both apical and uh, central group of lymph nodes. Yes, sir, but it is uh, same group, sir. Okay, is this single node palpable or multiple nodes? Single nodes, a solitary nodes. Okay. No, you said so two nodes. T4C, N1, according to you. Yes, sir. And metastatic? MX, M sir, we haven't assessed. Uh, but according to the history given, it is M0, sir. Okay, fine. And the stage, stage of the disease? Sir, uh, stage 3B, sir. Uh, do you know the clinical staging? I mean, apart from TNM <clears throat> staging, uh, which is a simple clinical staging which helps you to plan the treatment, like? Other than no, like, okay, see, okay, I'll tell you, very simple. It is a small and resectable tumor, which is equivalent to T1 or 2 and N0 or N1. Oh, okay, sir. Mm, small yes, and resectable. Yes, sir. Then you have got locally advanced, but still resectable. Yes, Operable. Is equi yes. Yeah, locally advanced and resectable. That is equivalent to T3. Yes, sir. And N1, uh, N1 or 2. Yes, and sir. And then you have got locally advanced non resectable, means T4. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then you have got established met metastatic disease, etc., inflammatory carcinoma. But Otherwise, it is easy. Clinical staging is simple. Clinical staging is small and resectable. Locally advanced, resectable. Locally advanced, non-resectable. So yes, simple. Sir. So simple. Yes, so this patient fits into which uh, stage? She is coming under locally advanced, non-resectable, sir. Very good. Very good. T4, right. Why? Because it is T4. Involvement T4, of... Yes. Skin as Skin well as chest wall, sir. chest wall. Can you tell me what are the components of chest wall? Sir, uh, serratus anterior muscle, intercostal muscles, and uh, lattice muscle dorsi. Rib cage, sir. Oh, no, ah, rib cage, not lattice muscle dorsi. What about pectoral is major? Sir, it is a component. It comes with the uh, component of breast, sir. Uh, okay. so it, is, it is not a part of chest wall, correct? Yes, you are right. Yes. You're right. All right. So now that you have made this clinical diagnosis with confidence that it is malignant tumor and most probably carcinoma of the breast, uh, how would you like to proceed further? Sir, uh, I would like to confirm my diagnosis, sir. How? The trooper, before that, I should. Uh, I should proceed with the imaging studies first, sir, with ultrasonography and mammography. <laughs> Why? What is the role of ultrasound? What is the role of mammography in this patient? Sir, uh, we should what what ultrasound will tell you? What will sir, ultrasound of the breast tell you? It will tell me about the uh, multifocal lesion or uh, multicentric lesion or uh, vascularity, anything is there. An extension of the tumor. Ultrasound tell you the multicentricity. No, sir. Uh, mammogram will tell me the multicentricity. Sir. But are you interested in knowing the multicentricity in this particular case? Mm, yes, sir. Because uh, it could be a medullary carcinoma, or uh, so what? So we have to see the other breast also, sir. See, other breast is other breast. We are talking, you are talking about um, uh, this mammography of the right breast, isn't it? We are yes, talking sir. about the right, right breast at the moment. Okay. Yes. Mammography of the left breast, that is okay. That is a different issue. Yes, sir. What, why do you want to know multicentricity in this particular case? Um. Okay. I am sure you will not have an answer to this question. Now, let me ask you another question. When it is important to know multicentricity? Sir, uh, to know about, uh, to go with the management, sir. What, what way? Yeah, correct. 
what uh, way what uh, chemotherapy uh, chemotherapy or uh, before that paid surgical no no before chemotherapy no not not chemo yeah consideration of surgical bcs yeah that's what have you heard of conservative treatment yes sir but uh, for this patient we cannot go with bcs yeah here the question of breast conservation doesn't that is why you don't need to know multicentricity so mammography is of no use ultrasound yes, is of no use so yes, you sir. need true cut needle biopsy what yes, about fnc what is the role of fnc sir would you uh, like to go ahead with fnc in this case i know sir why uh she is having variable consistency sir it could go into any no no that ultrasound guided you can take okay. why you are not preferring fnc sir uh, true cut biopsy uh, tissue Uh, it has more tissue. It is uh, more specific than FNAC, sir. And what else? It is related to treatment part. That is why it is. That is why I am asking. Sir, IHC, this. sir, IHC. Oh no, no not IHC. No, something else. Immunosector chemistry can be done. Or that is not more than that. Ah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Is the advantage advantage of truncated biopsy? Routinely, what you are looking for? Are you going to look for any markers? Yes, sir. Tumor markers we are going to look for, sir. What are they? What tumor markers? Sir, uh, P53, BRCA1, BRCA2. Anything? <laughs> Any three three markers which are important to manage, considering our stage? Not the tumor marker, ma. It is for prognostic markers or you know, genomic markers. What sir, are they? Triple triple markers. Sir, ER, PR, HER2 new. And third one. ERP are in third. Cartoon, you say. Okay. So, why are you interested in knowing about these things in this particular patient? Sir, management uh, differs. Sir. Uh, sir, if it is triple negative, we have to go with uh, radiotherapy. Oh no, no, not that. anyway. We'll come to that management very soon. But before that, all right. Now, uh, which gauge needle do you use for uh, true cut biopsy? Sir, twenty-four uh, gauge, sir. Which one? Look at twenty-two gauge, sir. Needle core biopsy. Not a FNC. Look at uh-huh. FNC. FNC is out. No, forget FNC. about FNC. We are only concentrating on true cut biopsy. Which gauge needle is preferable? Don't know, sir. Don't know. Okay. Have you done any time yourself? A true cut yes, core. Yes. You are done, and then you don't know what what is the size of the needle you have used. Okay. Did you did you use local anesthetic or did you do without yes, local? Hmm? Local anesthetic we had used, sir. Okay. Can you Proceed. explain the procedure of performing a true cut uh, biopsy? Yes, sir. Okay. Please go ahead. In uh, under uh, aseptic precautions, patient uh, the condition has to do the procedure in lying in lying down po- uh, position. We are going to fix the swelling, sir. And then give local anesthesia, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, we have to cover the. Uh, we have to give incision accordingly so that we cover this area uh, for the su- future surgery basis, sir. So we are not we talking are about incisional biopsy. We are not talking about incisional biopsy. We are so talking about stab. We are going to put and yeah, then we are going stab, to yeah. okay. Okay, sir. So that stab should be covered in the elliptical incision, sir. So. So that, that, uh, okay, okay, yeah. all right. That will be covered anyway. All right. That is more applicable to an incisional biopsy. Yes, sir. Huh? So, so my question about incisional biopsy. Then, w- yes, will you make a curvilinear incision or will you make a radial incision if you were going to take a incisional biopsy? Sir, uh, in this patient, I would go for a radial incision, sir. For. Uh, Curvilinear is not. Uh, we might. Don't don't make. See you you yourself answered correctly and now this time you are uh, okay. Uh, I am not talking about this patient in general. I am asking if you uh, if you are willing to take a incisional biopsy for yes, breast cancer specifically yes. for breast cancer. I am asking. Will yes, you sir. make a radial incision or will you make a curvilinear incision? So usually we'll go for a curvilinear incision, sir. 
but then that curvilinear incision that curvilinear incision that that may not fit into your uh, definitive incision for uh, uh, radical mastectomy that is why in ca breast it should be radial even if it goes against the skin line uh-huh. because that will automatically come uh, much away from the definitive incision made for uh, your uh, elliptical big elliptical definitive incision that you give for um radical mastectomy isn't it yes sir you make a curvilinear incision then it will be very close to the margins of the definite right okay all right fine uh all right the, then uh, what wh- wh- was it done and what was the report like in this case sir uh, we did an fnac uh, but uh, only blood components was there sir so they asked us to go for a trocat biopsy we have sent a trocat biopsy sir but the report is awaited yet sir okay all right all right uh, the report comes as a uh, invasive uh, ductal carcinoma yes sir hmm. uh how will you proceed further sir i would go for a chemotherapy neo adjuvant chemotherapy sir okay I, 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 would you like to use a better term for uh, rather than neo adjuvant you yourself decide the chemotherapy or will you take it to somebody and then decide sir i will go to uh, so first we have to rule out all the metastatic uh, you have to do a metastatic work up to rule out metastasis sir okay please tell us what all investigations will you do in metastatic work up sir uh, we will do an ultrasound up, ct abdomen ct chest oh oh straight no sir we any simple basic affordable investigations are available or, or not ultrasound abdomen uh, what will you look for what all sir, things no. will you look for an ultrasound scan of the abdomen to look for metastasis we have to look for liver sir okay any peritoneal mets how will you look for peritoneal mets are they visible like no, uh, like like liver mets are visible in the form of no, sir. Uh, then how then what is the way a uh, peritoneal mets take uh, which you can see on ultrasound scan sorry sir i did not get you no. okay all right what else will you look for in ultrasound scan for metastatic disease of the abdomen uh, we we'll look for uh, ovaries and uh, uh liver ovaries and any and other liver. manifestation of uh, metastatic disease in the abdominal cavity in general ascites sir and then so that is the way peritoneal metastasis uh, yes, uh, presents isn't it all right yes, and lymphadenopathy yes sir lymphadenopathy okay if we have facility so would you like to do a better investigation for metastatic work yes sir uh, to rule out uh, basic things we can go for ct chest ct abdomen uh, in a bone scan sir to rule out bone any scan. what is the current scan that we do bone scan is not done we can do a pet scan sir yeah so instead of uh, yeah uh, because it's a locally advanced disease stage 3b Yes, so sir. can as well uh, anyway you are going to go for a new urgent here yes sir okay so if the facilities are available if patient can afford i think uh, that should be an ideal uh, scan yes sir which will definitely tell us the metastasis yes, you will have to plan as sir told plan the further therapy along with the oncology team okay yes, what what chemo you'd like to give sir uh... we could go for a uh, five fluorouracil and uh, capacitabine and adriamycin therapy sir why both uh, five of you and capacitabine sir sure. well, what is the treatment. current current treatment like we have first line second line as sir told it's a uh, uh, infiltrating ductal non invasive ductal carcinoma yes sir what what is the current uh, chemo sir uh, cyclophosphamide uh and uh, capacitabine sir hmm, that has been what given is, in our uh, what is followed in our institution you tell sir uh, in our institution they are following uh, cyclophosphamide and capacitabine sir i don't think so it's not adrimizum 
Sir, uh, adiamycin is given, sir, but uh, not to all the patients, sir. Neogen therapy, last one to our patient was given only capacitabine and uh, uh, cyclophosphamide, sir. This case, you have to take it to the tumor board, discuss yes, with the yes, medical sir. oncologist, surgical oncologist, the radiologist. Then yes, only you can take mm, See, certain drugs they give based on the patients. Yes, sir. This is a fresh case, not treated by her. Line. So, yes, the first line, as Sir said, asked, what is the first line? This is the capacity, but the first line? Sir, for, uh, what sir, is the first cyclophosphamide. Line? What is the first line given, drug given in throughout the standard textbooks give you? Fifluorouracil. No, you read. You have to read. Read but okay. Just go and refresh. Hmm? Uh, now that you have given this induction uh, systemic therapy, all right. So the better term than new adjuvant is induction. When you have got locally advanced non-resectable tumor. Then the yes. better term, the, the medical treatment remains the same, whatever it may be, ultimately, but it is called induction uh, systemic therapy. All right. Uh, yes. If it is effective, if it is yes. effective, that means the tumor starts responding and the size yes. uh, starts yes. reducing. Then how will you uh, go ahead further? Sir, I would go ahead with the surgery, sir, if it's, if it is operable size, sir. But so what, what kinds of surgery are available uh, in this situation when the tumor sure. has responded? We would go for a modified radical mastectomy with uh, uh, axillary lymph node clearance. If it is... Uh, uh, but axillary clearance is a part and parcel of modified radical mm -hmm. mastectomy. Mm -hmm. yes, so sir. you have to use your, uh, your uh, this thing... Uh, Terms very carefully, you know. It yes, is sir. not. It is. It should. You it's should not, not call it modified yes, radical mastectomy. You know why? When you use the word radical, when the intent is cure. Yes, in sir. this patient, yes, yes, in this patient, uh, you yes, can't sir. cure. Chest wall no. involvement is. Uh, so the better term is simple mastectomy with axillary clearance. SMS. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Simple yes, sir. The operative technique is the same. Yes, sir. Same as modified radical mastectomy. But description is different. It is simple mastectomy with axillary clearance. Huh? Yes, and, but if it does not uh, decrease uh, significantly, it decreases to some extent, but not so well. Then, uh, But if it is still a still little bit operable, then uh, which is another operation that uh, you may have to consider. Have you heard toilet mastectomy? Toilet mastectomy, sir. Okay. Yeah. All right. What is the purpose of toilet mastectomy? Sir, uh, to relieve the pain. And fungating mass, infection, alteration, fungation, awful smell, and all that. So it is a essentially a palliative treatment. Yes, hmm? And after that, you have to complete the uh, systemic therapy that was going on before, sir, before you, you operated, and then followed by adjuvant, uh, post op adjuvant radiotherapy as well. Hmm? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. And sir, 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 wanted us. Yes, sir, yes, sir. And can I ask one or two questions? Please, sir. Yes. See, why there is an interval between two cycles of chemotherapy? So to see if any response is there, cytoreduction. See, my question is, we give 21 days between two cycles of chemotherapy. Yes, sir. Why? Sir, uh, cells, uh, regeneration time, sir, like... Uh, Tumor cells, tumor cell regeneration time. No, sir. Our uh, normal cells, sir. It is also getting exposed to the chemotherapy. Yes. Yes. So the hemopoietic recovery. Yes, sir. For which we give an interval. That is one reason. Any other reason? <clears throat> to look for the response, sir. What is cell cycle? Uh, in which stage? Uh, uh, yes, sir. In stage which we give chemotherapy in the cell cycle. Well, what is cell cycle? Tell me. Sir, uh, cell cycle is uh, it is there for every cells in our body for uh, um, for its. Uh, the cells are in various stages. It is G zero, G one, yes, something G two, uh, G zero, S one. 
G2, M, yes, something sir. like that. And yes, we sir. use combination chemotherapy because certain drugs act in certain stages. Certain drugs act in certain stages. Yes, yes sir. No. Yes, so when the when the cell is in G0, no drug will act in G0. Yes, so sir. when you give a day of 21 days, the G0 will become some other stage, some uh, G1 or yes, some some stage it will change to some stage then it will yes. become vulnerable for chemotherapy am i right yes sir. so what is uh, what, uh, one among the significant complication of cyclophosphamide when in uh, when we use chemotherapy with uh, cyclophosphamide one significant complication cyclophosphamide uh... and how will you manage that No idea. Okay. No idea. It, it is hemorrhagic status. Hemorrhagic status is a significant mesna complication. Yes, uh, uh, what is mesna? What is mesna? Um, sir, uh, so salicylic acid components. Mercapto ethane sulfonate sodium. Sulfonate. Uh, we have to infuse mesna before starting the cyclophosphamide. Thereby, we can prevent. Hemorrhagic status. Apart from that, we can hydrate the patient adequately before starting the chemotherapy, which can prevent hemorrhagic status. Okay. Yes, I yes, think sir. that's all from my part, sir. Thank you, sir. Can I well, sir? Uh, this patient she'd like to ask any doubts, any questions. The presenter. So I like to ask with all the discussions uh, surrounding around the nodule, which you have been yes, uh, the exclusive presenting. Where uh, like this case is going to be revolving around it. Uh, do we have see how do you stage a breast lump when there is more than one lump in a single breast? More than one lump in a single breast, sir. Yes. How do you stay? How do you clinically stage them? Sir, uh, since we cannot say size, if it is uh, more, means we will go for T3, sir, if it's multicentric. The biggest, that will be the appropriate thing. But when you are seeing more than one lump, uh, sir, any other faculty, do we have a suggestion on how to handle when you have more than one lap and how the T stage goes into it, sir? Uh, well, I think it might not be two different lumps. Probably this same lump is trying to fungate now. Yes, sir. So yeah. then becomes skin involvement and uh, it goes to T4 plus staging. Uh, is that the right way to look at it, sir? Uh, I guess so. I mean... If that is trying to fungate out, it is the same tumor which is made they are rather than... What tumor. happens when there are two different lumps, sir? Oh, well, I'm not aware of this situation. Sir, Actually, I'm... Uh, one of the uh, YouTube questions have come. Sir, if there is more than two or three, especially multifocal tumors in single press, how do we give the T stage? My guess was the biggest tumor takes the priority, but definitely the tumor uh, stage becomes different. But I need also need to represent because I thought I will take the input of the senior faculty here. Sir, sir wanted to answer. Sorry, sir. Sir, sir wanted to answer something. Please, sir. Please, please, sir. Please. Yes, sir I, I am with your answer, sir. I, I am okay. with you. I am with you. The biggest one has to be considered for the staging. <sighs> But uh, now the RTV, the radiological tumor volume, that is going to be also coming up in the future. But students, please be aware that uh, the T is going to be revised based on every tumor aspect. It was earlier only by the diameter of the tumor. But now it is going to be on multiple factors, depending on like how we do have GTNM for specific tumors. The mean tumor volume is potentially measurable by radiologists 
using variable methods like it may be a ct volumetry or something so volumetry is also going to be added rather than the diameter be aware of it and uh, that's it from my side thank you very much sir and uh, a father faculty can uh, give the comment mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. Well presented, Vidya, but uh, yes. some basic aspects, as Professor Bar Bapad was telling, you have to learn. Okay. Yes, sir. Right. That's yes. what from my side. Otherwise, well presented. Sir, I will yes. get back to you in the few next uh, after the getting the full reports. What is it? What was that module? Uh, get discussed. Because one of the subsequent classes you can share once you have the final report. Yes, sir. Because it came only day for yesterday. Yes, I yes, sir. Yes, presented sir. urgently. We had to present it, sir. I will discuss with the oncologist and the medical oncologist, and I'll let you know, sir. Please, sir, please. Mm -hmm. And um, Malika Jun, sir, maybe I can request one of your PGs to present in the coming weeks, and other faculty also can contribute one of the coming weeks. Um, uh, Shri Vijay, do you have any doubts before we close? Sir, uh, how... Like, uh, we don't know how to go about this case uh, because it is uh, a rare case. With it, why could it not be an inflammatory carcinoma? You mean to say why it could not be? It can, be, it can be, but we have to wait. That Ms. Bapa, sir, you want to speak in? Sorry, I didn't get it. Did you ask? You would like to know why it cannot be categorized as inflammatory carcinoma of the breast? Yes, sir. In according to the examination. Ah. Uh, okay. That's your question. Sir, but I clinically examined sir. What did she didn't have any sign, any redness or any signs. Only it has got a locally advanced breast carcinoma. There was no signs of any inflammation or any other uh, <clears throat> features suggestive of inflammation. But she is very particular. I said you can ask in the forum. Ah, uh, yeah. Because the inflammatory carcinoma, as the name suggests, the features of acute inflammation have to be there, and that is why, in fact, it gets uh, a differential of uh, uh, an abscess or something in case of uh, a pregnant lady, isn't it? Okay. And in, during which it is more common, actually, and it may be the one may uh, have a mistaken diagnosis. Uh, and it will it will be missed. Yes. Inflammatory carcinoma will be missed during pregnancy. Yes. So it is because of the presence of acute inflammation, acute inflammation features that it is clinically uh, given the name inflammatory carcinoma. Yes, sir. I I I don't know whether it is a histological. I don't think so. It is not a histological nomenclature. It is a clinical nomenclature, essentially. Yes. And another thing is. When even if you do core biopsy, generally we say that FNAC can sometimes be inconclusive, and that is why coronary biopsy is the investigation of choice for. Uh, but in case of inflammatory carcinoma, you may need two. Uh, you may need more than one attempt. Okay, sir. In in the initial attempt, you might not probably get the diagnosis. You may need okay. sometimes more than one attempt. Please. So so. That is why probably it is not an inflammatory carcinoma. Okay. Mm. Yes. And other features are quite otherwise uh, in favor of uh, medullary okay. carcinoma, I suppose. Uh, yes, sir. Large size involving the entire breast is uh, rather than a circumscribed tumor. It is a complete enlargement of the breast, isn't it? It looks like from your presentation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It was like totally enlarged breast. Yes. Uh -huh. So I, I'll be interested in uh, yes. knowing the follow-up of uh, this case. Actually, I've given my uh, yeah, I I have, uh, phone I don't number. number sir. I'll uh, <clears throat> get back to you because it was a huge lump, sir. There was not a variable inconsistency. It's a huge lump with a nodular discoloration on the right side of the uh, right upper outer aspect, sir. It was, mm. it was a small nodule. That's all. It was a huge lump covering almost in the involving almost the entire breast, sir. Mm. And another thing, we are, thing, we are the toddler stage, sir. We are just uh, investigating, sir. It will uh -huh. take, we'll take about one week to or two, then we have to decide. Uh -huh. I'll get back to you, sir. Over there. I'll, be, I'll be interested. I'll be interested. Another thing was coming to my mind looking from the photograph huh, of that right breast uh, and uh, lateral aspect. 
uh, that uh, could uh, i mean could it be it was looking like uh, something like supernumerary uh, uh, this thing nepolian area wala at least on photograph one of the possibilities <laughs> i don't know whether <laughs> you know blackest discolorations are ah okay okay blackest discolorations are Uh, I, I said somebody. She was hesitant to say that I took native treatment or something. Ah, so I had to go again. I must be application of some herbal medicine or uh, application of some hot fermentation, which has caused burns of the burns of the local area. Yes, remote village, sir. I, I asked her. I'll go and ask her again, sir. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you for your valuable outputs. Thank you, Mandika. Thank you, Karna, sir. Thank you, Karna Gwil, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Uh, we call this session a close and we look forward for uh, next week uh, thank you faculty for uh, really providing the